It's hot. It's very hot. It's very hot today. Ugh. <laughs> Many of you might be thinking it's too hot to garden and you would not be alone. Uh, September, people always think, oh, it's pumpkin spice lattes and it's time to, you know, cool off and get out the sweaters. No, your garden is still <laughs> just chugging along, right? Yeah. So, um, without further ado, I'm Suzanne and Sarah Smith. And we work here at Rogers Gardens as horticulturists, and we are here to discuss your September gardening checklist. And it's going to be a shorter checklist, but for some of you, it might be a little bit more labor intensive as we go on. I'm going to first talk about uh, the, the thing that I like to focus on. Um, for me, yesterday, we were just discussing tearing out our tomatoes because they were just growing and we have no tomatoes because um, we didn't plant any tomatoes recently. Sarah will touch on that in a minute. But uh, for us, it's we're just looking at the garden and we're saying, hmm, it's time to clear it and get ready. Get ready for fall and winter. So the best thing you can do right now, if you have nothing kind of going on and things look a little poor, um, start working on building your soil up. Um, if you watch Sarah and I in any of our videos or here, all we talk about is soil, building your soil, making your soil better. Um, people think that fertilizer is the most important thing for your garden, but actually it is your soil. Because if you have good soil, that soil is going to help your plant's roots open up and accept that fertilizer better. So just um, uh, Amending your soil is easier than you think. It's just something that you need to do kind of regularly to get it going. And so uh, the one thing I would say, everybody here in Southern California, we all have clay soil. And if you've been working on your soil and amending it, your soil might be better to a certain degree. But if you have not, one of the easiest ways to amend your soil is to use gypsum. And gypsum is something uh, we sell by the box full here. You can also go to Home Depot and get a gigantic bag of it. Um, either way, it just depends on how much you want to do this. Sorry, this is there. Um, so, you want me to, there. So, um, gypsum is super easy. Just get a cup, put it with your bag, and maybe like take a little bucket out or something, and then just sprinkle it on your soil. That's it. If you want to go crazy and you've cleared your soil, you can dig it in. But otherwise, you know, as you're walking around the garden, just throw a little on top of the soil and it will percolate down and help break up your clay soil. It is a great way to just get that soil a little bit looser, a little bit easier to work with. And um, you can move on to other and more fun things like my personal favorite. Well, it's kind of like I, sh I share my love between these two things, but um, soil optimizer. This is from John and Bob's. It is a small bag. It costs $24.99, but this is good for a thousand square feet of garden. So it's super concentrated and that means it's super easy to use. You can just grab handfuls and kind of throw it around. It's, this is specifically for your soil. So it is going to help your soil um, break up. It's got a little um, gypsum in it, but it's got uh, ingredients that will help your soil break up and it's super, super organic. So it's completely safe for you. It's, I think it comes from glaciers or, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly, but this stuff is magic. And um, I can't tell you enough how great it is. If you have pots, you know, things in pots, you can throw a little teaspoon or a tablespoon in there, depending on the size of the pot, but it is going to help your soil um, just loosen up and become a little bit better. And then you can use, John and Bob's has a four part system. You can see it on their thing. The first one is gypsum. The second one is optimized. The third one is maximize. So this has microbes and nutrients and things like that, that are also going to work with your optimized soil to help your plants open up a little bit better. So these two things together are fantastic. It is so good for your soil. You're going to see the difference within a couple of months. And if you use it a couple times a year, you're just gonna have the best soil on the planet. And then you're gonna start seeing more earthworms and things like that. So keep in mind, 
soil building is the best. And then one of the other great things, and um, this, uh, sorry, uh, this one. So uh, John and Bob's has this compost and it's amazing. It's super, super concentrated, but one of the main, main ingredients is worm castings. We have two different types of worm castings. This one's 100% worm castings. This one has some kelp meal and some other things in it. But either way, you're gonna use it maybe two or three times a year, just sprinkle it on your soil. You can dig it in when you're um, planting your soil, uh, sorry, planting your plants, or you can just sprinkle it on top and kind of rake it a little bit to break it up. This stuff is gold, and one of the reasons why it's gold is worm poop. <laughs> it, well, it's worm poop. It's worm gold. But what does it do to your plants? So it adds an enzyme up into your plants that uh, it almost kind of works like a natural uh, systemic, basically. Uh, so the little sucking insects and things like that, the aphids, the white fly, especially if anybody has hydrangeas, you are not hydrangeas hibiscus. Absolutely, you need this. If you yes. have hibiscus you know the struggle with white fly. Uh, this works really, really well for that, so. It does. Yeah, good for my roses, too. I don't have hardly any problems with aphids anymore. That's, that's the thing. You put it on the soil and it works through the roots like a systemic and up through the plant. And it takes a while to get to the very tippy top of your plant. Even if it's like a, a small tree or something like that, it's gonna take a while to get up there. But it does make the plant not taste good to um, the sucking insect. Yeah. insects and so how great is that how easy is that and how healthy yeah. and organic is that um, if you do have some uh, white flies and things like that we can talk about that a little bit later about how to actually get rid of yeah. them in a better way but um, yeah build your soil up it is this is a great great time because either you're getting ready for your winter and, and fall vegetables or you want to think about spring and maybe you're going to be planting some some bulbs and things like that having good soil means you get better plants okay so yeah like she was talking about with tomatoes i know my tomatoes are leggy ugly monsters right now and i'm just like looking at them and i've pulled probably half of mine i haven't pulled them all yet some are still kind of trudging along a little bit uh but this is definitely the time we're, we're kind of like transitional right now so it's like we still have some tomatoes um, if you still have, I do tomatoes in the ground and I do tomatoes in pots. Um, if you still have some of your pots lingering around, some of the ones that I pulled out, I'm like not really ready to put the pots away necessarily. Uh, so this is a good time to, in those pots that you pulled your tomatoes out of, uh, we do carry cool season tomatoes. Uh, so I don't want to pull out all my, put all my pots away exactly at the moment. So I've been pulling out some of my tomatoes and adding some of the cool season tomatoes. So we have things like Stupichi is a really great one. So any of the ones we have in these containers right now are the cool season tomatoes. So and it's like, not necessarily cool here. Yeah. It's getting cooler. But as these set, it will be cooler. So that's yeah. what you got to think about. Yeah. It's hot today. I'm super sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this once this really starts setting tomatoes, so I'm pre-planning, it's going to be a little bit cooler. So I always keep a couple of these around. It's nice. I'm not exactly ready to give up tomatoes. And who knows how warm it's going to be throughout the winter. So, yeah. you know, you could really have a good bumper crop later on. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's so hard to buy tomatoes at the grocery store. Once you start growing them, I just... It's, yeah. It's this is a very sad time for us because we're like, do we have any more tomatoes? Yeah, oh, we have really to buy them at the store. But yeah, we have... And then we also have things like San Francisco Fog, Oregon Springs. So these are all really great cool season tomatoes that you can plant in the ground. Um, buy these guys bigger if you can uh, because you're trying to get a good jump start on them. Uh, but it's really a really great alternative to just pulling out your tomatoes from your pots and just leaving your pots with nothing in them. Uh, these do work better in pots I find them in the ground. I, I always yeah. grow my tomatoes in pots. I feel like I can control it a little bit better, but it, but also it's easier to move around right. but the at the end of the season. Warmer and the containers too, so I think that's a big part of it as well. Yes. Because it keeps them a little bit warmer there. It does. And so um, we'll, that will kind of transition us into watering. And um, September is probably not too much different than August or even October because don't you feel like people think summer is like June and July and then, but here it's basically August, September, October. <laughs> So what you want to do is water, you know, take a look at the weather 
and water for that weather that's coming up. Um, you want to get ahead of any sort of heat wave that's coming. You want to water deeply and less often. Sarah and I cannot say this often enough. You want to water low and slow. So however you want to remember it, just it's better instead of having your sprinklers come on every day or every other day for a couple of minutes, you really wanna have that water soak down really far so that the roots of the plant, you know, can really have something stored up and it's gonna push it out to the end and it'll be better during these heat waves that we have right now. Oh, we've got a little butterfly over there. That that's also nice. helps leach out all the salts and stuff in your soil. That right. Build up. So that's really, really important is that low deep watering so you don't get salt tip burn on your yeah, we have a lot of mineral and minerals in our water here, and so that's the best way. Things like um, Japanese maples, even things like camellias and azaleas, can get that salt tip burn. And so we'll talk a little bit about camellias and azaleas in a minute. But um, to avoid that salt tip burn, which looks like you're not watering them enough because it's going to burn right out here at the very, very tip, it's actually usually just um, from the soil just holding too much salt. Uh, anybody else that does do veggie gardening, right now what you're going to see in the nursery is like a little funny combination of the warm season stuff and the cool season stuff at this right. time. Um, so I always tell everybody, you know, don't jump the gun necessarily for getting your cool season stuff. Like she was talking about, get your soil ready. Let it, let it sit for a little bit. Get that really nicely amended. There are a few things that I think are good to plant now. So if you have like little corners, little areas, little pots uh, even that you want to get stuff into, um, the, everybody always thinks about this as being like, oh, cilantro is such a summertime thing. But actually, cilantro bolts real fast. So if you've ever planted cilantro when it's really hot, it'll bolt super fast and then it's not usable anymore. So as we start cooling down, if you have a cool area in your garden that where you grow your lettuces and things, this is actually a much better thing for that. Uh, it's really great when they come in the six packs, but like lettuces and things, as long as you're protecting them right now, you can still plant them. Um, and just make sure it's water, water, water. Yeah, water <laughs> deeply. Yeah. Um, even things like cilantro, because maybe you don't use it as much as it goes later in the year, then just preserve it. You know, put it in some olive oil and ice cube trays and, you know, just make a pesto out of it and freeze it, but just um, stock up. And so, oh, chimichurri, yeah. yes. <laughs> Jar that stuff up <laughs> and then bring it to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just still an okay time to do that. Um, if anybody's watched any of our videos, everybody knows I'm a strawberry fanatic. I love strawberries, blueberries, and all the berries. She so has taught me a lot about what I love. One thing that I, I want to show you all is if you've got strawberries, you're starting to notice the runners on them. Pick these runners off. You do not want these runners on there. I'm still getting a really good amount of strawberries on some of my plants right now, but it's partially because anytime I see one of those little runners, I go through and I just cut that off. So it's very similar to like what you see on uh, like spider plant, right? So you get that long piece and then you got that little baby guy here at the end. So uh, a lot of times this will probably pain you all. I just throw them away, but um, <laughs> I just have so many strawberries. I don't need them else in, anywhere else at the moment, but um, you can plant these. Uh, so sometimes I'm nice and I'll plant them in pots and give them away. Um, but usually these don't produce for the first year. There's a rare exception. I noticed yeah. this year some of mine did, which was kind of surprising. Well, that's good. But yeah. no matter what, it's almost like a succulent. You just yes. keep getting more plants yeah. from the original plant right. as long as you're patient. So, and just keeping these cut off the main plant, though, because then it's going to still produce and still give me strawberries. So because I'm doing that, I still get a good handful of strawberries. Uh, almost like every other day still because I'm keeping these cut off. So don't let them make the runners. Um, if you feel too bad cutting them off and just tossing them, you can plant these little guys, give them to your neighbors, um, or fill them into other pots. My whole house is someday will be covered, covered in strawberries. As long as they're the good kind. <laughs> they are really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so make sure you're keeping these guys cut off right now. Okay, so September. I know it's so warm today it's ridiculous but it's a time to think about your acid loving plants so again azaleas camellias gardenias hydrangeas blueberries um this is the last month that you're going to fertilize them for the year um 
most azaleas and camellias are starting to bud out and show what they're going to uh, bloom with later on. You can see even right here, there's just the little tips. There's a flower there. This is an, an Alaska azalea, so they bloom a little bit more than most. But anyway, you're going to fertilize them well this month and then let them go until they're done blooming. Um, that's azaleas and uh, camellias. With gardenias, they're going to kind of go not dormant, they're gonna go quiet for the winter. They only really like to bloom when it's warm. So just finish uh, fertilizing them with a really good acid loving fertilizer and then wait until maybe March yeah. um, or after they're done blooming if they're camellias or azaleas. And then in the meantime, if you feel like you need to do something for them, you can mulch them. And mulch is one of Sarah and I's <laughs> It's on the list of our favorite things. So mulch is putting something around your plants to um, either improve the soil or to help keep the soil cool, uh, suppress weeds, um, conserve water, whatever you like. Um, if your, uh, your plants need a little something, you can get some acid planting mix and just use it as mulch. So of course we have larger bags. I'm just too lazy to get a big bag, but um, you can just sprinkle it around there and it's slowly gonna work itself in. Just use it like you would shredded cedar or bark or anything like that. You're gonna use this and it will work its way in and help improve the plant. We also have this peat moss, which is a great one for helping to add some acidity to your soil. It's not gonna change the color of your hydrangeas or anything like that, but this is a great mulch. And it's again, gonna slowly work its way in. Um, this is just a really, really nice acidic um, addition to your soil. Yeah, those, most of those yeah. are very shallow rooted, so that's it's Yeah, easy to so that. you just want to keep it that way. And then um, we have some acidifier fertilizer for um, hydrangeas and things like that. You can do that, but um, probably for the next few months, just use the peat moss or the acid planting mix as your mulch there. And then look now we have color. some color. I know. So this, it's so fun because, again, we always joke that September rolls around and everybody's like, oh, sweaters and boots and pumpkin spice and we're like, <laughs> no, I get so oh hot I'm wearing a skirt and I just can't even put shoes on. Uh, so, uh, but... But the flowers don't stop. The flowers are showing us that it's fall time. All the stuff you're starting to see in the gardens right now. And it's just, isn't it, it's so funny that the fall flowers mimic the fall colors and the plants. It's just Probably so how funny. it came, came to pass. Right. So, but it's funny too, because we don't really get a lot of fall color here, right? There's not, you know, it's not like going back to Pennsylvania is always beautiful fall color. It's like, oh, everything's still green. <laughs> so it's mimicking that fall color in our yard to give us that feeling of transitional time, right? So it's nice to kind of do that because we don't really have a lot of seasons here in Southern California. So it's nice to kind of fake it with all the really pretty plants. So or you can just come to Rogers and see our Halloween stuff. Exactly. Which is <laughs> Halloween room's open, everybody. Um, but yeah, so we, of course, sell really beautiful pots already all done. So if you just want to grab something and go, it's all done for you. Um, you just put that by your front door and... Yeah. It's, this one's the prettiest one. I love this one. So our original design team does a really great job uh, with this. So we have all these really beautiful ones already done. But the stuff that you can plant right now, you're going to start seeing the classic mums. Like nothing is screams fall yeah. like mums, right? Um, the Rubecchias. I love, love, love Rubecchias. They're so pretty. <laughs> They're so pretty. They're so big. They're and they so come in so many big. different colors that you can kind of have this little cornucopia I mean, of look at that. beautiful. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I also really like the Gallardia. So Gallardia is a really pretty flower. And what I really like about Gallardia, and these are great for this planting now because they'll go well through the cool down, but they also are okay with a little bit of that heat that we get. Um, Gallardia is really cute because I love that when it stops flowering, this little poof ball appears and it's just so cute. It is. I absolutely love this flower. Most plants don't look good after they've exactly. died. Most plants you got dead head, dead head, dead head. So I'm always telling people, you know, go out there and snip off those those ones that are done. But I love the little poofy that this guy gets uh, once it's done. I think it's just and, so And that cute. one also comes in a lot of different colors. Yeah, and a lot of very fally reds, you know, all these fiery kind of beautiful fiery colors that are just so great. Um, you might see some of the cool stuff pop up in the nursery. We don't even really have any of it quite yet because it's just too hot to get those in the ground. Uh, next month is when you're going to start doing your uh, 
violas and your pansies and all those cool seasoning kind of things. The kale, you're just gonna start seeing the kale come in, the ornamental kales and all that. Uh, just a little bit too hot for those still. So, but it's a great time to get these set in. Salvias are still beautiful and gorgeous at the moment. So you've got all kinds of beautiful salvias. And they're such a colors. great thing to plant right now. Exactly. What a great they, contrast of that blue and the orange. Right? Just They absolutely love the heat. Um, this is the plant of the month here at Rogers too. So for any of the salvias at all, you buy two, you get one free, no matter what size it is. So Even if it's orange, a big cachet pot, yeah, exactly. two, so, two, uh, buy two, get one free. Super great deal right now. And great to get a sale. Oh, and I, I brought a black petunia just because. Oh, we have one. <laughs> we got black petunias in. Um, I am obsessed with Halloween. Um, so they are pretty. so pretty and yeah. even those just go like so beautifully with that so and amazing. keep so those healthy. things in maybe after Halloween you can yank those and you'll still have that beautiful beautiful fall color you could <laughs> that's our secret but they're so so pretty and so neat and so folly so one other thing that I just want to mention that is coming in September, we don't have it yet, Ron might be able to tell us the date of when we are getting bulbs soon? Maybe next Friday. Soon. Very, very soon. So we're getting fall bulbs and so we'll be having tulips, narcissus, paper whites, hyacinths, crocus, anemones, ranunculus, freesias, spiraxis, I can't read my own writing, and some allium. <laughs> Uh, we'll be getting some allium bulbs, and allium bulbs are super, super hot right now. Everybody loves them. They're Instagram perfect. But um, that's another reason why you should be prepping your soil, is making that space for your bulbs so that you can put them in after you've refrigerated your tulip bulbs for two weeks, and then um, get ready for spring. So uh, there's just a lot of stuff that you can do to prep right now. And then next month we're going to talk more about, like, actual planting planting yeah. the name of the game for september is definitely prep 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 it is and water prep and water mm -hmm. prep and water and um honestly just um read up about the john and bob stuff it cannot be easier um <laughs> we just recently moved into a new house and the the it had been basically uh, just ignored for a couple of years <laughs> and uh, the soil was hard as a rock and had not a single earthworm, no living thing within it. And now it's been, it's been about six or eight months since we've started really treating the soil and it's amazing. Every time we're out there gardening, we'll say, oh my gosh, I found an earthworm. You know? It's just, it's a really, really nice thing. We brought hummingbirds back to the garden and bees. And so um, having good soil is so rewarding. Um, you, you even like just like digging in it better when your soil is loose and beautiful and you think I want to plant you know a beautiful rudbeckia out there and you know you can go out and easily do it it's so much better than if you think oh my gosh I need to get a pick and a chisel <laughs> and like I'm gonna have to like dig the smallest hole possible because I don't want to kill myself so soil prep is it's so rewarding so that's I think that's about it for us uh, are there any questions? No? Wow. We were, that, we we were, were so oh, good. Know, yeah. In the Facebook and Instagram world. Uh, oh. <laughs> one of our Facebook users uh, wanted to know if you can use the worm castings on indoor plants as well. Yes. Yeah, so they want to know if you can use worm casting on indoor plants. Um, for those who stayed in person, there is a coupon if you wait. <laughs> Ron will oh, hand it to you. So yes, you can use worm castings on indoor plants. It's really, really good, especially, you know, some of the indoor plants that you have will have those little leaf sucking things, uh, pests, and also um, fungus gnats. It's, it's helpful with fungus gnats, although there are some things that are a little bit more, it'll kind of head them off. But um, fungus gnats is a whole other question. Yeah, worm casting doesn't smell either. I think a lot of people right. are like, oh gosh, okay, anytime we think about it's, anything, they yeah, it's smell. absolutely they think fertilizers smell no like smell, no smell anything. whatsoever. Yeah, so it's, it's a really great product, absolutely. Any, oh. Anything else? We were so no, we're thorough, good. there's not a single question. I know, everybody's just like, oh, so it's time to just relax. But it's not. <laughs> Dig and get ready. Yep, they okay. can get ready and water, water. All right, well, that's uh, it for us today for the moment. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank
Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Ron. And um, thank you, everyone. Ron's walking around with his coupons. So I hope you all enjoyed this. And if 